and he liked to hit. And uh, that was a fun guy to watch play the game. Kari Jones. Has G. Roy Simon on first down, halfway to a first down. You know, like Kahari Jones right now, an important game down the way they are 27 16. When he needs a play right now on second and six, second and seven, what's his go to guy? They've got talent, no question. But which guy does he go to right now? How about Dave Donaldson, who's now in on offense? Greg Frere's second interception of the game, fourth of the year. I should say fifth of the year. Two have gone for touchdowns. Miscommunication down there, and Greg Frere's, a 99 All-Star, has his second on the night. Well, second on the night. Again, it was an overthrow. The first one was an overthrow with Winnipeg knocking on the goal line, and almost there, Greg Frere's is going to drop over here and then just slide to the football. Ball's overthrown, and he says... Thank you very much. I'll yeah, take that. That was that his easiest. Kahari Jones just let it get away from him. You know, he's thrown three passes in this game, and two of them have been terrible. So on the turnover, the stamps begin at the Winnipeg 50. Dickinson right to work. Receivers covered. He has about eight yards. Well, we'll see where they spot it, but better than five, somewhere around seven. Well, I got the feeling that Dave Dickinson is holding the hammer, and Alan Pitts has kind of got the nail, and they're looking at the coffin saying, well, let's put this last one in here and we'll see how we can get and, this thing and wrapped we'll take up. The fourth quarter off, is that what you're saying? <laughs> yeah. Alan Pitts, two catches away from another CFL record. He needs one to tie on Narcisse for most receptions. What a catch. There were flags everywhere, however. Vince Danielson had a hot start, and he comes back with a great catch near the 25. This may be coming back, however. Well, there's a penalty. I'm not sure if Winnipeg was offside. They may have been offside, and the, that way the play would stand. Winnipeg 97. They were. They're only Harris, but you get the feeling that this receiving core just, it's like one up each other every time. I mean, it's like they watch Alan Pitts make a nice catch, and then Aubrey Cummings comes up with one, and then Mark Bolrick to the rookie catches one, so Vince Daniels says, I want one, and they, they just, they outdo each other every play. One of the great stories about this Calgary offense and the receivers in it, George Cortez, the offensive coordinator, calls all the plays. That way, when Dickinson goes into the huddle, <laughs> none of the receivers can speak to him, because he's, I'm not calling the play, yeah. it's the coach. They all want the ball. Here's Dickinson, there's Pitts down to the five-yard line. That's number eight, and that gets him even. He's all tied with Don Narcisse, all-time catches in Canadian Football League history, and it was another big one over the middle for Alan Pitts. 919. You know what? Alan Pitts and Don Narcisse, and here's how it looked. Tied the record on a pattern that he has seriously made a living off in his career. That little half post, half curl pattern right over the middle. And don't be surprised if they don't look for him in the end zone right I think now. That's exactly what's on Dickinson's line. That's him right at the bottom of your screen. There he goes. Alan Pitts can't hang on. He was on the goal line and hammered. Jerome Bolden said, Whoa. if you're going to break the record tonight, it's not on my corner. You're going to earn it, baby. You're going to earn it. He's just going to run the quick out and watch the hit he takes. If you're going to break the record, you're going to earn it. It's a violent oh. game, folks. It's a violent game. Look at this. Well, Dickinson shouldn't have thrown it in there. Well, you tell, you tell me there. any other game in the world that you can get hit like that in. I don't think so. Well, now they've got to think about making sure they get the touchdown, the Stampeders here. 118 to go. This lead is not substantial enough with a whole quarter after this. Dickinson shotgun, four receivers, far side. You know what, John? I think he was trying to find it to him. I think that Dave Dickinson was trying to get the ball to Allen Pitts, and I'm not sure if he was thinking about that record, but twice he tried to get it to him in double coverage. Yeah. Both because times there were two bombers right on top of Allen Pitts. Here's the second one. Dave Donaldson's in there, and right in front of your screen, look at that. That's Brian Clark. 
Double coverage again on Pitts, trying to force the ball to him. Trying to break that record. And they'll have to wait for the next series. But they still got lots of time in this game. In fact, the whole quarter. Stampeders will settle for three from Mark McLaughlin. No problem. 30 to 16 now. Calgary has roared back on the Blue Bombers. Well, they're moving right along and getting close to that average. They're averaging 34.7 points a game and just 4.7 away from it. Lots of game to play. I think Dave Dickinson tried to get him the record on the touchdown throw. And, of course, Winnipeg, they know who the go-to guy is, especially down near the goal line. And they paid a lot of attention to Pitts, especially Jerron Bolton on that big hit. Stampeders have scored 27 of the last 29 points, and here's Alan Pitts up on the board. With 919 catches in his CFL career, even with Don Narcisse, he already holds the record for the most touchdowns by a receiver and the most yards by a receiver, which he set last year in Edmonton. The Stampeders would dearly love to get him the record of 920 here tonight at McMahon Stadium, a near-capacity crowd on hand and let everybody enjoy the celebration with Alan Pitts. Well, yeah, and it's that's exactly it. A full, full house. They all know about the record. It was written about all week and knew that he would be close. And Wally Guano said, hey, listen, if he breaks the record tonight, he's having a big game. It probably means we're going to win the game. And, well, they got a good lead right now. Albert Johnson the third, trying to get something going for the Blue Bombers here. No flag down that on a block that looked like it was from behind, but not much of a return either, so. So what has Alan Pitts done in his career? Well, uh, just a few yards, over 14,000 touchdowns, 115 touchdowns in his career, including that huge season where he had 21. Yards in a season, 2,036. Those are all Alan Pitts records. And that's updated. He is over 100 tonight. So that's his 63rd 100 yard game, which is also a record in the Canadian football league. So much for Kahari Jones. This is Kerwin Bell back at the controls. <laughs> Philpot made the catch and might have lost yards. Solid defensive work by Daryl Hall. Yeah, just a couple of bad throws by Kahari Jones. And you know, when you talk about an ankle injury, John. Yeah, you, it obviously affects your running ability, but it can also affect your throwing ability. If you can't plant like you want, if you can't step up strong, it takes the, the zip off the football. And Kahari Jones was just, was not accurate in a couple of throws, and he's back on the bench. Gain of one previous play, second and nine. Kerwin Bell, last play of the quarter, and Philpott is wrapped up again. Bombers send out the kicking team to begin the fourth quarter. Good start for Winnipeg, but the offense hasn't been able to get into the end zone. The Calgary Stampeders have roared back for a 14-point lead. The CFL live on TSN at the quarter. Brought to you by New Arctic Ice, the invigorating new fragrance of the Gillette series. It's beyond refreshing. You saw some of Alan Pitt's impressive numbers. Uh, here's the Calgary Media Guide, and there is s uh, seven pages on Alan Pitts, and believe me, the writing is very, very small. What an unbelievable career and impressive record. Yeah, it really is. I mean, the thing about Alan Pitts, you talk about his stats, and they're amazing. Uh, over 900 catches, you know, over 100 touchdowns. But the most important thing about the football team, as long as Alan Pitts has been with them, is that they win. I mean, he's a gr truly great football player that impacts a football game. As he's gotten older and as his skills have changed, he's defined or refined his game to, to uh, fit his strengths. And just really a, a great football player and a guy that we should tip our hat to tonight. Alan Pitts, a guy that will be in the Canadian Football League Hall of Fame. A great, great talent, Matty. This, tonight it's Alan Pitts. Friday night it's going to be Damon Allen. Tonight as well, it's the Calgary Stampeder defensive rush that 
Calgary is ben benefiting from. Mike Roach, defense coordinator, knows the importance of a good pass rush, especially in a quarterback who struggled. And who else knows how important a defensive rush is? Greg Fierce. He's going to take every one of those guys out for steak dinner because he is benefiting from their pass rush. Yeah, I saw Alondra Johnson get in there and pressure a little bit too, Chris. But I tell you, Mike Roach has got those guys on their game and they are pressure, pressure yes, quarterback. Yes, he does. There's no doubt about that. But I want to talk a little bit about a big picture. We have a two-tier league right now, BC, Toronto. Winnipeg and uh, Saskatchewan are struggling a little bit, but what these players got to remember, the playoffs. Two of these teams are going to make the playoffs. So the group of guys that focus and look at that specific goal, even though it's in August, those are the ones that are going to get ahead. Who cares what the record is now for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers? Getting the playoffs, everything changes. And some perspective on the numbers. We talked about Alan Pitt's numbers. How about Travis Moore? Ten TDs now. He has now tied the entire BC Lions team, and he's one behind the Argos. <laughs> that is impressive. Let's send you back for fourth quarter action. All right, guys. Bombers got a decent start, but the Calgary Stampeders have scored way too many points and surpassed Winnipeg by 14 at 30 to 16. Here are the numbers through three quarters. Dave Ritchie said it at halftime. He's leaving the defense out to dry, and that time of possession told that story. Short kick. Coleman waits for a hop, draws a flag at the 45. 34-yard punt, no return, but they'll get a little bit with the penalty tacked on. 34-yard kick, and Alan Pitts on the verge of another CFL milestone. This is Commonwealth in Edmonton last year when Alan Pitts set another standard. All-time leading receiver in yardage on this play. Nothing fancy about that one. Quick little out. Matt put him past Ray Elgard on the all-time list into first place in yardage. He just keeps continuing to add to that total. And now is one catch away from Donald Narcisse. He catches. First and ten. One catch will do it and put Pitts in a place by himself in CFL history. Travis Moore was the intended receiver there, and Dickinson took a little hit. Well, that hurt him, too. And, and again, you, Dave Dickinson has had a lot of time tonight. The offensive line has done a pretty nice job. Here he goes down hard, I think, more than anything. I believe it was Ryland Wickman, the middle linebacker, that pulled him down. And Second and ten for Dave Dickinson of the Calgary Stampeders, the CFL's only unbeaten team. Out across the 50 at the 51. Some early movement. Now the flags come down. Dickinson stands in. Pitts can't make the catch. Maybe just as well because I think the Stampeders were offside. Dickinson also got hammered. Yeah, Dickinson got hit. Pitts couldn't come up with it that magic number to get over to 920 and Jerome Bolton the corner that was trying to cover him looked like he pulled his hamstring. Jeroni Harris is the guy who put the hit on Dave Dickinson. And he's going to get a penalty for it. Well he made that late hit early in the game that I thought was a questionable call. This one here he throws it and Mistreating the quarterback, 15-yard penalty. Thank you very much. So the Stampeders out across midfield in the Winnipeg Territory. Jerome Bolton was limping around. He was a guy trying to cover. There he is on the turf. He was trying to cover Alan Pitts on that crossing pattern. And when he moved for the football, it looked like he pulled his hamstring. He wouldn't be faking it, would he? <laughs> I mean, just think. He doesn't want, you mean he doesn't want to be in the trivia question? He doesn't want to be the answer. <laughs> I'm kidding. Honestly, I'm kidding. No, <laughs> he, he's not faking it. Durant, if you watch this tape, I was really kidding. <laughs> well, somebody could be on this drive, the answer to the trivia question. Uh, he'll be replaced by Dave Donaldson, but it won't be Dave Donaldson covering Pitts on this play. It'll be Rio Wells. One catch needed by Alan Pitts to surpass Don Narcisse. They're dead even in receptions in their CFL careers. And that was for Rock Preston. I don't think he saw it coming. Uh, but Pitts was open. Was he? You know, Dave Dickinson left him. He, he looked at him initially, and the Bombers were kind of there, but then 
he he flashed open in behind him and was waving frantically. Watch this. See right here, that's what Dave's looking at him. But now look at this. Now he's open. He slips in there. Dave still has the ball. And now you just stand there going, oh, I was there. He starts waving, man. Look, number 18. You know, the Remember guy. Remember me. You know the guy, 900 catch. I was there. I've caught eight tonight. <laughs> I just need one more and I'll break the record. Second and 10, Stampeders. We're into the final quarter at McMahon. Here comes the bomber charge. Batted down at the line. Trying to get it to him again. This time it was knocked down at the line of scrimmage. So that time he did stay with Alan Pitts. Alan Pitts opened up late, but it was knocked down. You know, all the times we've seen Alan Pitts and the Calgary quarterbacks make it look easy. In the last couple of sequences, they just haven't been able to come close to hooking up, can they? Well, Have they? You always say, you know, the you know. last goal in overtime is always the toughest to score. The oh, game yeah. seven, always the toughest to win. Well, for Alan Pitts, breaking the record in that last catch is going to be the toughest. Yeah. You know it. 30-16, to 16, Stampeders lead the Blue Bombers. Still lots of time for the Bombers to get back into this game if Albert Johnson the third can come up with it. an electrifying return. Down at the five. Takes the short side and slides through to about the 15, maybe the 17. 11 on the return. Aldi Henry, great special team player, made the tackle to the Stampeder. And the Calgary Outriders celebrating another great night for the Stampeders here. You know what I love about golf, John? And makes the catch. No, what do you like about golf? What I love about golf, you know, it's it's been a tough Friday and maybe a tough Saturday, and it's Sunday morning and the golf is on and you got a bit of a headache and you're lying on the couch, relax. What I love about golf is everyone whispers. <laughs> it's beautiful. So what do you do with the kids in a situation like that? Well, that's, where are they? Yeah, that's. <laughs> yeah. They don't whisper, do they? Yeah, there, there's no whispering going on there. Kerwin Bell for the Bombers, almost oh. picked up, and it was right. Into the mitts. Well, you can't get more of a gift than that. Jason Clement standing there going, well, that surprised him. I think it surprised him more than anything. You know, he, he got hit right. A bad spot between the nine and the six. Yeah, right in the hands. You know, interesting. Jason Clements played well all season long. And Kevin Johnson, remember that name, John? Linebacker for the Stampeders last year. Took a shot at the NFL while he was released by the Green Bay Packers, cleared waivers, and will be back in town probably next week. Second and 10 for the Bombers with time running out. And that time, Bell was hammered, and he hit the running back, George Jones, in the back. Shante Peoples was in on Kerwin Bell. This is typical of the Winnipeg season to this point. Plays that they need big plays, just communication problems. Kerwin Bell, look at this, right here. Not even looking back to the ball, looking to block, and Bell has to get rid of it, just hopes that he turned around, and he hit him between the two and the two, but it was the wrong two. It was the one on the back. Yeah, the one on the back. So here's Bob Cameron again. Stampeders should have decent field position, 12-17 to go. As Cameron got a little pressure, but got it away. Marvin Coleman back at the Calgary 30. Not many big returns tonight for Coleman, but he's steady as they come. And he's out to the 37 with a five-yard return. We're watching the CFL Live from Calgary and watching Alan Pitts. McMahon Stadium rocking one more time. Almost a sellout here for the Calgary Stampeders and the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Largest crowd of the season. About 400 shy of every seat being occupied here tonight. We're watching Alan Pitts as he sets sights on another CFL milestone. Should get it tonight. Almost guaranteed, right, Glenn? Well, one catch away, and still lots of time, over 10 minutes. Yeah, I would think he'll get it. First and 10, Calgary. Pitts, one catch away. It'll be Rock Preston. Hey, he dropped the ball. And the ball is loose. Depends who has it down there. Bombers are celebrating. Ryland Wickman picked it up. It was a hard hit at the point of attack. I mean, th there has been some violence. We talked about it all game long. There's been some big, big hits in this game. And that was maybe the biggest. He shot through the middle. Rock Preston got rocked. Watch, watch the hit. He's going to hit it on the opposite side. Now watch the hit when he gets up by that official to your right of your screen. We went with the fake for a second, too. But there's the big hit. 
That was done by Brian Clark. Ball goes on the ground, and Rylan Wickman picks it up. So here are the Bombers set up inside the Calgary Stampeder 40-yard line at the 37. Great chance to get right back because there's lots of time left in the game. 11.30 to go. Bell under pressure. Flags are down. Ball is loose. Bombers back to midfield to recover it. But Bell got hammered again. So Watsky comes up with it. For Winnipeg, we'll check the infraction. Holding. Winnipeg 66. That's the climb. Second down. Well, John, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of Winnipeg Blue Bomber fans right now asking this question. What is wrong with our offense? And in the first quarter, thought they played pretty well. They've had some miscommunication between quarterback and receiver in quarter number two and quarter number three. And now in quarter four, the Calgary Stampeder defensive line is getting after it, and it's just like a red flood in front of Kerwin Bell on every single play. Well, Ray Jacobs was forcing at that time. Lost to 23. Second and a whole bunch for Kerwin Bell. Far side. Stoddard made the catch. He's an Alberta boy. Stopped at the 50-yard line. Jamie Stoddard, number 88, out of the University of Alberta. CIU All-Canadian in 99 and getting his first chance. Well, he made a nice catch. Well, obviously well short, but again, Kerwin Bell was dancing at the moment he took the snap. I mean, he was dancing around Calgary defensive line, rushing him the whole time. And you can't let patterns develop when you're rushed as a quarterback. It just down the field, your receivers haven't had a, a chance to get over. Another golden opportunity wasted for the Bombers after the turnover on the fumble by Rock Preston. Bob Cameron hammers this down to the 15. Marv Coleman tackled by the first wave of Bombers. All right, Alan, it's time. This is the series, Mr. Pitts. Let's see it. We've watched 919 great ones. Let's see another one. Well, since he tied Don Narcisse at 919, the Stampeders have really struggled with the passing game. They went to Pitts a couple of times on the goal line when he was in double coverage. And it hasn't worked out very well trying to get him number 920. Well, this is it. Let's go. Let's see it now. And you know what? There's a whole bunch of people watching. There's not a guy in the whole stadium that doesn't want to get this thing over with more than Alan Pitts. Stan Peters beginning deep in Calgary territory inside the 20 at the 17. Dickinson had to bring it down. The Bombers were coming. And Dickinson was sacked. And I think it was fairly fortunate he was able to hang out of the football, Glenn, with all that bomber heat right there, and he's at the 17-yard line. Tony Armstrong was involved, and Tony Armstrong over from the BC Lions got to pass rush, and they've had sporadic pressure throughout this game. Actually, yeah, it was Armstrong that registered the sack as well. So they've had sporadic pressure. At times, they've looked good. They've got some help from their secondary pat rushing the passer. And then when they decide to sit back, Calgary's really taking it to them. Here it is, second and 17. Play action fake. Bo Richter made the catch, and the Stampeders will kick it away. Another sequence where Alan Pitts doesn't get a sniff at the football. Running out of time. That time, it wasn't coverage on Allen Pitts. wasn't double coverage on Allen Pitts. It was a defensive line up front and a linebacking core for Winnipeg that didn't allow Dave Dickinson to get the ball off to Allen Pitts. So <laughs> he'll have to go and regroup on the sideline again and hope that he gets another crack at it, which he should. Well, there's lots of time to get Allen Pitts the football. I think you want to do it on a nice catch, right? Well, I think probably for him right now, he just wants to get any kind well, of catch. I suppose, but <laughs> I don't mean you have to stretch out and lay parallel to the field or anything, but you don't want just a little wee four-yard dump, do you? No, we don't. No. We want to see some Allen Pitt style. Yeah. Down the seam. We're not fussy. <laughs> Bombers could get good field position from this again. Albert Johnson the third. Markers everywhere running in circles that time minus eight on the return 43 on the punt. time running out on the blue bombers it's the cfl live from calgary